Welcome everyone to Fundel episode. I got myself a new old stock via embedded board, mini ITX, nano, pico, ITX, something ultra low power from like a decade ago. The nearly last via nano processor, dual core even 1.6 gigahertz. Even today they are not the most cheap. I had to be a little bit shrewd negotiator. They wanted 150 bucks. I negotiated them down a little bit. Still not the very best bang for the buck here because a uh, quad core AMD board is much faster but I just wanted this via nano here in stock. I was actually thinking already a decade ago when we did more embedded Linux stuff to have one but they were just too expensive. In my opinion probably one of the biggest mistakes of via back in the day selling them so expensive. Back in the day friends and family had the 32-bit via and we even had some projects with that so I never tested the 64-bit capable silicon even with the later version here with virtualization extension. So let's see if that actually works in Linux and what kind of performance numbers we are getting. So it looks really like new old stock. Fun fact, being a short negotiator, the invoice was from some recycling company. So most likely they got some recycling material and sell this here for good money. And this indeed is indeed sealed. So maybe never used, as I said, way too expensive back in the day. So let's... Ah, okay. Can be opened anyway. So this is a dual core version, 1.6 gigahertz, and also not only the first and only 64-bit version of VR I ever had, also the only dual core, because until the VR Nano everything was single core anyway. The only faster was quad core, but I think this might have been a lower clock. Anyway, this is well enough for testing also one of the first there back in the day with HDMI output that is certainly good for us as we really like digital display connectors and yeah, PCI, PCIe and integrated graphics is via Chrome stuff that has not the most amazing driver situation so maybe another winter or so we find ourselves doing something with that as well. Let's see from our archived memory stuff, this Apple stuff, maybe from the Mac Mini, could maybe fit, but it is capable of slightly higher clock frequencies, so I'm not really sure if this will be compatible, if too fast will hurt or if it just work, maybe, but that's what we are here for, trying everything random out, otherwise would be set if I need to buy vintage memory just for this test. Then you only need to figure out where's the power pin to short. Actually in 2014 there were rumors about some ISIA 2 architecture. Even with rumors that it would run hybrid ARM and x86 code or something, but somehow that never appeared for real. Hmm. We have post. Looks like our slightly faster memory from the Mac Mini is compatible. That is nice, saves me money for that. Obviously, yeah, super energy efficient, yet the blower fans are a little bit noisy, but that could maybe a little bit tuned. So let's plug in our not only keyboard, but also external SSD and see if we can boot this. Maybe not yet. EFI, let's see if my portable SSD has even master boot record and EFI booting and see what performance we're getting. Could actually probably even network boot this from our latest DOS stuff theoretically and maybe I should actually just do that having here a collection of directly network bootable Linux goodness. Slightly wonder why it powers up immediately though but maybe that is a empty NVRAM thing. Hmm. No post on HDMI maybe. Has this is very loud blow off and certainly not the most amazing. Let's see what we get from the SSD. Maybe this SSD doesn't have old fashioned BIOS booting and this might not be an iffy BIOS. They have VR Nano X2 at 1.6 plus gigahertz. Nice old fashioned BIOS actually still has a time running. Actually, it's running slightly faster. That is Funny that it's 1.7 
gigahertz, but whatever. Smart fan, very loud. Yeah, at 5000 RPM. <coughs> Actually, it was probably trying to boot from network, I guess. Yeah, it has Samsung USB booting, but maybe not iffy, I guess. So yeah, for the highest portability, I could make this hybrid booting with old-fashioned BIOS and iffy. Problem is, it's encrypted, so... Yeah, probably should also change the network booting example here to Grub2 because the full disk encrypted is not supported and no fun than with Grub1. But yeah, at least during boots, of course, it's a little bit funny, energy efficient, and then it is totally loud there. I know why I didn't brought this overpriced stuff back in the day when it was new. Yeah, so this actually works. No surprise there, this is why network booting is amazing. Just came here from the test server. Uh, could actually boot our DOS demo here just for the fun of it. But then, next step, booting that setup and seeing what the performance will be on Linux. So this should probably network boot. The only question is if we can get this external crypto mounted. So this is the latest kernel 529 coming down from the network server. So far maybe so good or not. Takes a little bit long though. Ah, by UUID. Mm. Yeah, okay, so then this arch wiki Linux thing I typed this by ID off from was most likely wrong. So crypt setup we can do this manually as usual. Just for the educational fun obviously. So crypt setup this probably should be looks open c2 something like root is it usually and then I usually just cut here the init because even I don't wanna type this here trial and error so certainly mount this that is mapper root then let's hope that works to I think root RFS and it says here root of S. Maybe I should change this for the ease of use. So then mount none move dev to root of S dev proc. this and then the most dangerous of all search root root of this should probably do it because dangerous this is yeah okay of course yeah root of s yeah I should have used root of s damn it yeah okay so much to that proof of concept then let's do one more reboot interesting uh, all the extra Work here for nothing. Yeah, I change this on the server. Much better when stuff just works, obviously. It's also nice to have this kind of set of files on the server, then I can just plug anything, network put anything, totally amazing stuff. So actually surprisingly, this did here some mode setting. Let's see what we got here. We indeed got Veer. That is surprisingly more than I expected, but I don't expect this old fashioned open Chrome driver to do anything. Also, yeah, scrolling speed, you see the more text there. It's hilarious that dual core 1.7 something gigahertz scrolls so slow. My recurring critique of, yeah, monolithic kernel and then if the algorithms are not the most amazing, then it's also not the most fast. So, in my opinion, with a micro kernel with more amazing scrolling, blitting certainly could be much faster. Well, it could also be much faster on a monolithic kernel, but anyway, uh, CPU info. And yeah, Centaur Halls, 615 Via Nano X2 4350 at 1.6 something, 1.7 gigahertz there. Amazing stuff. Also thanks to the vintage memory here of 
slightly underclocked. I'm surprised that it works because it's much fancier, slightly faster DDR3 or something of that sort. Anyway, you see PC stuff so amazing you can just mix and match, recycle back and forth and uh, probably try to get X up and actually we wanted to run the benchmarking stuff also when I probably don't even have this open chrome stuff installed because it didn't need this in a decade. At this speed not the most amazing because I guess it's not USB 3 so the external USB speeds there could actually LSUSB something, actually some NEC, could NEC be? USB 3 actually, 400, no this is USB 2, yeah. no surprise there. Interesting, auto configured X even comes up with something, really wonder with what, actually not too slow, at least dragging a window, let's see which driver that would be. Set it auto configured here. Also yeah, 2019 desktop Linux stuff just works. It, well, something, it's certainly not 3D. Okay, this is frame buffer, but for frame buffer it's surprisingly snappy. Maybe it got MTRR memory type range register configured or fun stuff like that. Emerge missing only XF video open Chrome maybe. Yeah, of course not installed. Let's see what happens. There you have it. Cheap stuff, recycling stuff from eBay. Well, not the most cheap, but at least a little bit documenting the history and having all the different vendors here really in stock. Intel, AMD, VR, for example, just for reference. Also, um, certainly this blower fan is not amazing. Not even getting warm, so I have no idea what they were thinking. No cable getting through there. Anyway, there's also maybe a second fan header. Anyway, the fan is super annoying and also probably not the most necessary. Okay, now with some load it's getting, but it's not even really warm, but yeah. In my opinion it could have been more successful with a lower price and a less annoying fan. Really not sure what they were thinking there. And this is how companies um, eventually go out of business. Well, they are still somehow sort of around. I slightly wonder what they are doing because not so much is seen from them, but that is probably something for another story. No, it still has BDEF, so somehow open Chrome stuff is not picking up automatically. Hmm. The more we test, the more issues we find. I hope you enjoyed this little brief overview and now we run the benchmarks. If we get some results, I will show them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. Fun stuff, the open Chrome driver, so it's actually auto-matched but doesn't load. Some other open Chrome driver is the only one which installs here into Another directory. Oh, yeah, right. User lips. This is somehow. I wonder if this is an issue with our T2 package or actually maybe only left on YouTube discovering such issues. Most likely here this shared include is missing for configuring the path. So yeah, actually some cross guidance. Not really sure. So yeah, certainly someone was using it eventually, but apparently not recently. Also, I like this architecture tech, not that it would matter, but I like it more somewhere around here and uh, then probably rebuild this again. But that's what we are here for, making open source and Linux better and open Chrome, according to news, a lot of missing details, including 3D that at some point was actually available, but a little bit unstable. Also a lack of documentation was planned for that. So yeah, let's restart then and then let's get to the benchmarking if actually Open Chrome comes up and works. Actually, it is different, not the right mode, so so much to that. And actually, I wonder if this is transparent or now it's transparent. Obviously, if the mode would work, okay, it's VGA though. I wonder, or is it just the scaling here? What does the mode say? And somehow not the really right mode. And 200. Hmm. Okay. Apparently the signal generated is not really standard conforming. Apparently because the display now thinks it is different mode. Though certainly not ideal. I wonder if 
only says VGA1. I slightly wonder if HDMI would work, but that is a problem with such kind of non-mainstream hardware, is such kind of details like HDMI and stuff at times not working the most amazingly. So not really much luck here with that. But um, as you see, quite some stuff to do. Eventually, another winter day, not only does the digital output right now not work on Linux. Fun fact, the frame buffer has the correct mode. The problem with the separation, in my opinion, recurring theme here, some stuff in the kernel, some stuff in libdrm, the 2D driver, Mesa, and then, yeah, stuff don't match together. Anyway, it's time for benchmarking. Let's run the benchmark and see what kind of performance we get. Open bench here. Yeah, this blower fan is really hilarious. I have no idea what they are thinking. Even when we built here and used the course, actually now just finished, we uh, barely get here a warm heat sink. And uh, yeah, the sensors here, CPU, internal sensors on Linux show here 47 degrees. So yeah, this um, is certainly, let's maybe pull this out here while it's running because yeah that is certainly better wonder how warm it will get now certainly test this here live for you on youtube let's take a look on the benchmark results so performance wise a uh, little bit problematic with this was different benchmarks here and so on but we are faster than a g5 here for example like consistently surprisingly again this was two gigahertz so yeah not too shabby actually and now with the fan plugged out they're actually silent and surprisingly not too far here from an Opteron, though also granted this is a little bit slow Opteron from back in the day, quite similarish to that. And yeah, you have the full list, certainly way faster than a G4 from a decade earlier and other fun stuff. So not too slow, not super fast obviously, and nowadays not the most cheap. Certainly you want to get some AMD or whatever. Of course we have the build time and runtime, runtime wise also here VR, again a little bit yeah, sorting wise AMD E350 and otherwise we would need to sort by some other benchmark here. How does it compare to some Phenom? It's still a bit faster. Actually where is our Mac Pro 2? Okay, that is still a bit faster but also consumes 300 or so watts. Anyway. Interesting results. I hope you learned something for your inspiration of what to do with your recycled material or build on the cheap. How fast is this in real life or how slow has software become? Well, you see even browsing here is a little bit of a not that snappy experience, which my recurring theme, in my opinion, yes, this is dual core 1.6 gigahertz from a decade ago, but in my opinion, there is no real excuse for modern web and software being that slow. That being said, I'm curious if it would allow to start the live stream that I had some issues with recently. But I would be surprised if it does. Whatever's wrong with it.